On this episode of the Globe News Report, fall fun becomes a tradition for families throughout the Goshen community. A Goshen College student-made documentary film makes its world premiere at the Goshen Theater. And several new restaurants with unique styles and cooking have popped up around the community. That's all coming up right here on the Globe News Report. From the Globe Studios in Goshen, my name is Dante Stanton. And I'm Liam Morris. This is the Globe News Report. Liam, it's great to be here inside the Globe Studios. I must say, I'm really excited. Thanksgiving is right around the corner. What are you most thankful for this holiday season? I'm thankful for getting through this semester, and I owe that to my family and friends and my mentors on campus. How about you? Uh, well, that's great. I'm really thankful, you know, of course, for family and my friends here at the Globe. I'm really most excited for some of the holiday traditions that are coming up. Those are always a blast. Speaking of traditions, residents in Goshen have made a tradition out of attending Kircher's Family Farm for fall activities. Amelia Turnbull has more on the story. Apple picking and more fall fun is just around the corner in the Michiana area. Kircher's Apple Orchard is a staple fall fun destination for most people in the community. Kircher's got its start in 1922 with William Wheeler Kircher. Kircher planted apple trees at his home and later expanded to a 40-acre location. Now, Kircher's is family-owned and farmed on 300 acres of land. Molly Kiefer, co-owner and market manager at Kircher's, comes from a long line of Kircher's owners. I'm the fifth generation um, of the family, Kircher's uh, family, and my great-great-grandfather started it. Kircher's has many options for people of all ages to enjoy fall fun. Oh, everything's fun here at Kircher's. Uh, we have you pick apples, uh, we have you pick pumpkins, we have hay rides. Customers enjoy coming out and getting the farm experience, but one specific event seems to stand out in their minds. They do um, the hay rides. I really like going on the hay rides with um, my family. Definitely go on the hay ride. The hay ride is so much fun. They cart you in, they, they, you sit on hay and you go on a little cart over to the pumpkin place where they have set out pumpkins for you to choose and then you go choose your pumpkin. With all that Kircher's has to offer, it's no surprise that they have families who come out to the farm every year. It's generational, definitely. Everybody comes and they say, oh, we've been coming for generations. So it's a lot of fun to see all the families come out. But you hear by word of mouth, people talk about Kircher's all the time, like driving past and seeing it or going with friends and family. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of people talk about it. Yeah. Customers from all over the nation come to enjoy the fall activities and Mrs. Apple. Oh, we get thousands of people. Um, we, my mom is Mrs. Apple. She's been doing um, field trips for like 40 years. Um, so everybody calls her Mrs. Apple. And um, she sees at least 5,000 kids a year. Kircher's is a staple for fall activities in Goshen, especially for young people. Kircher's is like the only place you can go, you know, around here to go get just family-friendly entertainment, fall entertainment. Next year is going to be a special one for Kircher's. So we've been here 100 years next year. We'll celebrate 100 years. So 1922, we started it. More information about Kircher's Sunrise Orchards can be found at kirchersorchard.com. Reporting for Globe News, I'm Amelia Turnbull. It's great to see so many ghosts and residents making Kircher's Orchards a traditional destination. Have you ever been there before? I have. I absolutely have. It's where my family and I have gotten pumpkins every year since I was little. It's always a go-to destination for the Stanton family. Coming up, we'll visit the premiere of Blossers Park, a recent documentary a pair of ghost and college students produced this past summer. That and more are on the way on the Globe News Report. I came to Goshen thinking that I'd just be acting, but over the course of my four years, I've taken part in all the other facets of the theater, and I think that's helped me gain a wider appreciation for theater as a whole. I mean, it takes all those things that I'm interested in, like the design aspects of theater, the environmental studies course I took, it takes my music major, and it just focuses it all into theater. Welcome back to the Globe News Report. A new documentary focusing on one of Goshen's most forgotten locations, Blossers Park, premiered in October. Jeremiah Sherrill and Tyson Miller have the story. Five Core Media's latest documentary, Blossers Park, made its debut recently to a fantastic reception at the Goshen Theater. Produced by Courtney Templeton and Jackson Steinmetz, Blossers Park was not an obvious subject at first. We were working on our other documentary at the time down at the Goshen Historical Society 
and we saw this little display about Glossers Park. And I was like, no way, that was there? The filmmakers found upon visiting the island that not much of its past had remained. It's kind of hard to get around, but there was also a lot of um, surprising remains left. There was a maypole and just a lot of concrete foundations there. Projects like this require a lot of work. It took Courtney and Jackson months to create a documentary that would tell the story of a long forgotten island that at one point was the hot spot of Goshen, an important gathering place of the community. Early June is when we began production. Me, Kyle, and Jackson sat in a conference room and we like brainstormed different ideas. And then we just finished it yesterday. <laughs> no, the day before yesterday. <laughs> The documentary may not be the only source of information that becomes available about the park. Uh, one of the areas at the Historical Society that we're interested in is oral histories. And at some point down the road, we are eager to be able to use the outtakes and the interviews that they did during this process to augment our oral history bank of knowledge relating to the park so that some of the gems that I'm sure were revealed uh, will be available at least for research purposes. Down the road, the documentary will be made available online on Five Core Media's website. For updates about Blosters Park and the other Five Core Media projects from Goshen College, visit fivecoremedia.com or follow them on social media. Reporting for Globe News, I'm Jeremiah Sherrill. What a great story done by our very own Courtney Templeton and Jackson Steinmetz. Those two put a ton of effort into this documentary. Were you able to catch the opening? Unfortunately, no, but there is good news for folks who weren't able to attend. Wasser's Park will be shown again on the campus of Goshen College on December 7th at 7 p.m. in the Umbra Center. Coming up next, we'll try some tasty burger treats that are popping up around the Goshen community on the Globe News Report. the best college radio station in the nation. It's not New York City or Chicago, it's Goshen College. Our broadcasting program is just one of Goshen's 35 outstanding majors. At Goshen College, you will work one-on-one -on -one with top professionals and get studio time in your first semester. You can call a game from the playing field or broadcast from a downtown radio studio. How do I know Goshen was the best choice? Right after graduation, I'll start my new job as a radio morning show co-host. Take the next step in your broadcasting career. Liam, I have to ask, are you a burger fan? There's nothing like a good burger with all the fixings. How about you? Oh, I'm a huge fan. And good news for all of us is that there are several new burger locations having opened up here in the Goshen community. That's right, Dante. And our reporters were able to get the full scoop on all the tasty details. Mackenzie Sanchez has the story. New restaurants are taking over downtown Goshen, but they aren't just any kind of restaurants. Peeves and Ash and Eat in Goshen are two smash burger joints new to the area. These smash burgers are a West Coast style burger. So we are a fast casual smash burger restaurant. Um, we are full counter service. Um, we also have a full liquor license. Both restaurants also serve vegan and vegetarian options and serve up their own unique styles of fries. We run a West Coast inspired smash burger. So we focus on a really thin, crispy patty. Uh, we do lots of fun fry upgrades. Uh, and for anybody who doesn't like burgers, we have a couple of chicken options, a couple of wrap options, um, as well as kind of some vegan vegetarian options as well. Both Beebs and Ash and Eat felt that Goshen needed more food options and for that reason decided to open up in the heart of downtown Goshen. Beebs and Ash hopes to be a fun, casual environment where you can meet with friends and family, and on the other hand, Eat is really laid back with a little weirdness that makes everything about them just as fun. Both restaurants are excited to serve the Goshen area with a unique kind of burger. Hours for Beebs and Ash are 4 to 9 p.m. Tuesdays through Saturdays, and Eat's hours 6 to 8 p.m. Tuesdays through Saturdays, and 11.30 to 1.30 and 6 to 8 p.m. on Fridays. Reporting for Globe News, I'm Mackenzie Sanchez. Mm, I don't know about you, Liam, but that makes me hungry for a West Coast style burger. I'm right there with you, buddy. I think that going to one of the new burger joints in Goshen would make for an excellent globe outing. Up next, an interview with Executive Director for the Northern Indiana Hispanic Health Coalition, Liliana Quintera, on the Globe News Report. I'm getting my degree from the college named TV School of the Year three out of the last four years. It's not in Muncie or in Indianapolis. I attend Goshen College, and communication is just one of the 35 outstanding majors offered here. 
At GC, you will work with professionals and get your hands on the camera in your first semester on campus. How do I know that Goshen College was the best choice? Right after graduation, I start my first job, broadcasting professional baseball. Take the next step towards your career. Welcome back to the Globe News Report. Earlier this week, I spoke with Liliana Quintero, Executive Director for the Northern Indiana Hispanic Health Coalition, to discuss COVID-19 in the Elkhart community. Liliana, how are you today? Good, Dante. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation. Yes, absolutely. So that, that's great. So what exactly is your role? You're the Executive Director. What exactly is your role at the, uh, the Northern Indiana Hispanic Health Coalition? Sure, Dante. So I am the Executive Director of the Northern Indiana Hispanic Health Coalition, and I will say that my role is one, to be a visionary, two, is to advocate for the community needs, and three, to be sure that things happen. So basically, it's changing hats all the time. If I had to be running programs, I'm going to be there. If I had to be advocating for the community, I'm going to be there. If we had to be taking the responsibilities of some agencies that are not doing projects such as these vaccination clinics that are very important. So we are going to have to do that. As long as the community need us, we have been pressing and doing things that make a difference. So speaking on the vaccine side, a vaccine and testing clinic is being set up this weekend for Elkhart County residents. Uh, what are the timing dates and, and details that the clinic will be open? Sure. So this Saturday is going to be our eighth clinic offering COVID-19 vaccination uh, offering uh, COVID-19 vaccines completely free in Spanish drive through so people don't have to get out of their cars. So it's going to be this Saturday, November 20th. We are going to be at our organization, the NIHAC, Northern Indiana Hispanic Health Coalition parking lot. We are located at 444 North Napanee Street in Elkhart. We are going to be there from 10 in the morning to 2 p.m. So for this clinic, we are partnering with Indiana State Department of Health and we are partnering with the National Guard. So we're going to have around nine, 10 providers. We're going to have around five, seven volunteers and staff members from the NIHAC. So the idea is to help the community members who are thinking to get number one, first time dose of any of the vaccines available. Number two, second dose, you know, if you get a Pfizer or Moderna, we know that you need a second dose. Number three, if you wanted your kids over five years old to get a vaccine, so we know that this has to be the Pfizer and it's a third of the dose of the normal Pfizer. So also we're gonna have this available. Number four, if you have an immunocompromised system, so that means like a, your immune system is kind of weak, people such as diabetic people or with some chronic conditions, the doctor may recommend to get a third dose. Okay, so look at the difference. One thing is third dose and another thing is the booster. So we are gonna be offering as well third dose for these people. Number five, we're gonna be offering booster shots. So people who are getting already, who got already the two shots in Moderna or Pfizer, they can get a booster shot. And also the ones who got just the Johnson and Johnson, they can get a booster shot. So what the CDC has recommended is that you can do a mix and match of the vaccines for the booster shot. So we know that Johnson and Don Johnson doesn't have right now a booster shot. So you got a Johnson and Johnson two months ago, you are eligible to get a booster shot either from Moderna, that is half of the dose of the first or second dose, it's just half, the dosage is just half, or you can get a booster from Pfizer that is exactly the same amount that you get when you were getting, it, when you got the, the, the Pfizer. That is important to differ. Okay, that sounds fantastic. It's a great thing for the community. How did, so you mentioned that you were working with the National Guard and the, uh, the state of Indiana itself. How did that relationship begin? Uh, you know, did you, do, would you have to reach out to the National Guard to set this up or to the Indiana state? So yes, basically we were working historically within uh, Hart City and what happened on this process and I appreciate this uh, question Dante is because trust is very important. It's something that is very difficult to build with the Hispanic community. So for example, Hart City, the first time that we were contacting them to work in this drive-through initiative that we are the pioneers with the drive-through in Elkhart, 
uh, they were saying, I don't think that is a good idea, Liliana. We have we are lucky we just get 10 or 20 people in a day for vaccines. We're talking about July of this year. And I say, don't worry, this is going to be successful. So we have in the first event, we have 196 people getting the shot. So they were amazed. So then we organized other four clinics with Heart City, of course, because they saw the results and they were so happy that they were able to use us as a bridge to outreach the community. Then they had troubles with the staffing. So as every single organization in the state, so they didn't have enough people willing to work on a Saturday because I forgot to mention that, that we are also making these clinics available when people are as well available. So when they can have access to that in a safe place and also in a convenient hours. So then they say, we cannot keep working in these mobile clinics. So then we contact the ISDH and they have like a, like a mobile troop for different counties. And one of them is kind of handling St. Joseph and Elkhart and happened the same. So when I contact ISDH, they say, oh, Liliana, we're gonna be jumping in, in one leg. If we get 100 people because we are lucky if in a full day, A to A, we get 40. And the first clinic, we got 156 people. Okay, and you mentioned that the, the appointment status. Uh, is there, where can community members register for appointments ahead of time? Yes. So the community members can do two things for uh, setting an appointment. One, they can get one of our flyers in any of the stores or on our Facebook live, uh, our Facebook page. And you're there gonna find a QR code and they can read that QR code and they can set the appointment online. Second, they can call to the, our COVID-19 hotline that two, is 574-206-3938, 206-3938. And they can set an appointment as well there, or they can call to our office on our normal hours. That is 574-522-0966, 522-0966, and they can as well set the appointment there. Uh, last question is uh, if there's anything else you'd like to add about the, the clinic coming up this Saturday, uh, please let us know. So Dante, basically my invitation for the community members is that the, the COVID is still there. I know that unfortunately in Indiana, we are behaving like a, it's gone. We are still in orange, meaning that we have a high rate of transmission. I think that no matter who is listening to this video right now, it has a huge social responsibility to do their part to stop this COVID. Thank you very much. It's a very strong message to close things out. I really appreciate that. Thank you for spending time with us today and doing this interview. Thank you, Dante. Thank you for your flexibility. That's all for this edition of The Globe News Report. Make sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at 911 The Globe. And our website, globeradio.org, for more videos and local content. Until next time, this has been The Globe News Report. Oh, how good